Hello, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all keeping well. Uh, you're enjoying our new Facebook group, as I am. I thought the last project, the journal, was so heavy going. It was so intense that this is just purely for fun to let our hair down and just... We'll not think about anything now. It is different, but as I say, it is for fun, not to be taken seriously. Say that, it's but a it's in patchwork or applique and slow stitch. Now, it's symmetrical, believe this or not, and the eyes are symmetrical. These are the whiskers, but you can see that the effect that various colours and various applique pieces have on the overall design. Now, I'm looking at this thinking that looks really weird because of the the purple bit here. The two eyes are dead uh, are in the same place. As I said, it is symmetrical. It's a symmetrical shape, but the different colours are throwing out the symmetry. And um, I wasn't quite aware of that until I've seen it on the screen. Like the ears are exactly the same. But this one looks heavier and it looks bigger than that one because of the beads and the dark colour. So that is a really interesting, um, really interesting to see how something can be knocked out of symmetry because of the size of the patches and the colour as well. You can actually see here that the lighter colour looks a lot um, a lot lighter, literally lighter, than the darker side and the same down here as well, here. But anyway, so that is what started off as a lucky black cat. Now it's, it's about nine inches or maybe Yes, it's about from foot to top of the ear, it is eight and a half inches by about six from ear to ear. So I saw the, I, well I actually found this in a box of things that I had and this was made, um, it was made to illustrate a page in a book actually, this, and it was, I called it Lucky Black Cat. And it, this must be probably about 30 odd years old. And I found it. it. This hasn't been stuffed. I found it in an old portfolio I have. And I thought, oh, a lucky black cat. Perhaps we'll do this just for fun. But of course, this was made for a specific purpose. Um, and it might have been colour, actually. Complementary colours, the red, the green, on the black complimentary neutrals black and white now I just want to stress so that this isn't intended for children so on that cautionary note have fun I hope you enjoy it so the first Bye. thing to do is find something nice and round to draw to draw around for your template I've chosen to use paper plate like so just flatten it out and then you need a smaller shape now this is going to determine the size of your cat now my blue shape is four and a half inches and my plate is actually nine and a half now all i'm going to do at this stage is draw all the way around the blue top and i'm going to need two of these but just for the minute i'm just going to straighten up my card and i'm going to cut one of these out so that's the first one cut out Now, I've already cut the second one. I did that earlier. So this is now the body of the cat. And what we do now, I'm going to place them down on a piece of paper. Just an ordinary piece of A4 paper. And with the two circles, I'm going to place one on top of the other, like so. And they're overlapping here about half an inch. At, at the widest point, it's about oh, about half an inch but no more and then I'm going to sellotape these together and as usual the hardest part was to find the end of the sellotape but I've done that now so I'm going to join these two pieces here 
and I only need one piece of sellotape and as you can see I've only stuck it one side the other side is quite firm now that's quite secure so place this onto your paper like so and with a nice sharp pencil draw in some ears where you want them as long and as wide as you want oh this one's looking a bit wonky <laughs> I'm going to have to straighten that up and then do the same at the bottom with the two feet making a straight line at the base straight the way across now don't worry about the wonky ear because that is only for placement um, just to let me know where to put the ear now with a piece of paper marry up the corner of the paper if you're using a straight piece and draw around the nicest ear or the nicest triangle and cut it out lovely now you're going to cut four of these all the same size and the same shape you're going to have two for the ears and as you can see two for the feet now on a piece of spare card place your triangle edge to edge if you have a nice straight edge there place the triangle down and cut around it now you don't need to draw around it you could just cut around it's quite easy now you need to cut four of these so place the ears and the feet where you want them to go and you're going to just sellotape them on top on top where the ears go and then on the bottom just overlapping them slightly now when you've done that carefully lift up the template from the, the paper and turn the paper over and place your card template on there and draw around it You're going to draw right the way around it and as you can see now it's taking on a quite a symmetrical shape we, we want it even all the way round so right the way all the way around the edge quite a nice thing to do this takes me back to childhood I think we all like to do something a bit childlike at times that's it and then I'm going to cut all the way around the edge finished and here it is now to make sure it's symmetrical fold it in half and it should be the same either side now if it isn't just get your scissors and trim around the edge so you get the same shape either side and then when you open it out you can see you now have a nice symmetrical shape that's the same on um, both sides now I'm just going to make a note on the template of the seam allowance because if I don't do that I'm likely to forget that we need a seam allowance here all the way around the edge so what I will do I'm going to mark it as a reminder but when I go to cut this out I will add seam allowance all the way around the edge so as usual I've prepared some calico to give the background or the front this is actually for the front a little bit of strength so when we're sewing it it's not flopping all over the place so this will be the front and obviously we're going to cover this with bits and pieces of leftover fabric that we have I brought some in from my rag bag here but a lot of it is far too big for such a small design so I've started just randomly chopping bits up here so I'm going to pop those to one side just for a second and I'll show you the back now the back and front have to be big enough for the design to go on and for us to get a seam allowance which will be round about here say half an inch around all the shape 
so it has to be quite a nice size it's no good giving you these measurements because yours will probably be a different size so you can see from that that it's quite a nice size not too big it's manageable so that is what I've chosen for the back at the moment or oh, that side now one of them is the wrong side and one is the right side now because this was all that I had I was given slightly larger I've no idea really what is the front and what is the back because they are both stunning pieces of fabric I think maybe this could be the back um, I'm looking at the birds there are birds on this I'm looking at the bird there and it's more detailed this way but it's just stunning back and front what a lovely piece of quality fabric so anyway that is going to be back I've yet to decide which which way that I'd like it so that can now go over here so next thing to do is look at your calico calico the same size this is slightly bigger because that is just the size I happen to have so that has been lined with some lightweight interfacing nice nice sturdy piece of fabric now to work on and back to our cat design okay now you can stick a couple of pins in there at the moment and I think I will because I've had a lot of coffee today and oh, my hands are a bit jittery <laughs> I've had an awful lot of coffee I should say and it's only two o'clock in the afternoon so I should be bouncing all over the place by three I'll hurry up with this now I've just put the two pins in to hold it still and all I'm going to do with a nice sharp pencil nice there not just lightly just go round the shape now this will give us give us a guideline as to how far we take our patchwork because we don't want to cover the whole background the whole calico in patchwork because obviously this piece will be wasted um, we won't be using that for this particular project so we want to stick to the shape the basic shape and size of our template as much as possible and that way we won't be making hard work for ourselves and we won't be wasting our resources either so there we go I'll take that off now pop that safely to one side and there it is so we know now I'll see if I can make that bigger and maybe you'll get to see the pencil line it's absolutely pouring out there again this has been going on now for nearly two weeks I'm going to Brighton this weekend for a long weekend and do you know I don't care if it does rain it's just going to be nice to pack a suitcase and go somewhere anyway enough of that chit chat you can see here the outline all the way around here and it's all the way round so I will make that smaller so you can now see what I'm doing here so with the little pieces that I chopped off from the large scraps I'm just going to start covering this shape now I know that the shape sort of I need to cover that much from point of the foot point of the ear a little bit lower than the bottom there and exactly the same here so that is the area I need to cover with my patchwork so I'm just going to put these on randomly just I don't want to I don't want to spend any time thinking about color placement um, she says not putting two reds together I don't want to spend any time doing that yeah, I just want to put them down as I pick them up each piece is now in place all being pinned down so the next thing to do is just tack them down run your needle along nice sharp needle 
just some tacking cotton in that and you're just going to do some really big stitches clip each piece as you go that one's actually come out so just big stitches if you went round each piece individually it would take forever so all we need is just tacking big big stitches and that will hold each piece in place and that's each piece now held in place with some tacking the tacking doesn't make any reason or rhyme it's darting about from one piece to another crossing over great big long stitches here but all that doesn't matter because the tacking comes out and it is just to hold all this in place so i'm just going to take all the pins out now there we go so all the pins are out now so that's our new fabric all stuck down nicely or sewn down nicely I should say and it's, it's already looking a bit like sort of cattish isn't it now I'm going to put our template on the back and this will be solely used as reference so I need to, 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 to work out from there lovely ah oh, lovely i can see through that just make sure let the light shine through the back make sure it's in place there yep that's lovely i can just about see the light shining through so i can see where the fabric ends now i'm going to draw around the cat on this back now it doesn't matter how thick it is as long as it isn't pen because if you used a pen on here like a felt tip pen or a biro you would be likely to bring the colour up on your cotton or your thread to the front so stick to um, pencil if you can you can even tack right the way around this shape and I probably will when I turn it over and then that will give me a guide for the sewing lovely and there is the cat shape now I'm going to tack around that shape in a different colour thread so I see it I have the same needle but this time I'm using a darker thread one just single single strand with a knot in the back and I'm going to go right the way around the shape here making sure that I get some nice big stitches on the front so I'm picking up a little bit on the back but big stitches on the front and I don't think you can see that but I have two nice big stitches there already and I shall follow the shape all the way round and this will give me a guide now for the next stage now that's done and if I turn it over you can see the outline of the cat there we go now one of the good things about doing this is because when you turn it back and you look for the outline you can see if you've missed anywhere by doing that I could see that this here the outline of the cat was too close too close to the edge there so I've just had to pop another little bit of patchwork there um, and there's someone somewhere else here I might have to make this bit a little bit bigger too but for the time being until I get to that that bit there I'm going to start sewing it in feather stitch and I'm going to start with this nice big line here I'm going to take it all the way down here as a starting point now feather stitch we have done before and it's in our book of stitches I'm going to try and make this a small one and all I'm going to do with the feather stitch is go from side to side so you're catching both edges of the patch make that bigger 
So you're catching both edges. And that stitch will be used to go all the way around the edge. Now what I will do, just as a refresher, I'll put that onto one side now and I'll just show you how to do this. Refresher. We have two patches here on a background fabric. I will pin them but I won't tack them. There's no need to tack, it's just a demonstration. So that's to hold it down but on the actual piece of work I tacked them, I clipped them. So let's one more one more pin there. Now the feather stitch, a nice needle that's going to go through all the thicknesses. So you want a nice, not too thick, a nice length with a nice point there, and a nice big long eye that will take a couple of strands of of uh, floss or silk or whatever you choose to do wool you might choose to do yours in wool and then we come in here come from one side bearing in mind this, this is exaggerated an exaggerated size so you can see it on the on the camera on the screen so you come from one side you keep that down that piece of thread there down with your thumb and unfortunately <laughs> it's a rather tatty thumb I've been busy as you can as you can see there um, and then over this side okay now you're still holding this down with your thumb don't let go because that thread will spring up and could not now decide how long you want your thread your stitch I want mine here so I'm going to bring out my needle in the center in the center of those two pieces of fabric still holding it down and then move it gradually and there you go and that is your first stitch so then you're going to come over to this side you're going to come underneath still holding it down but this side you're just working this time you're just working on one side then you're going to take it over here down now as I say these are in our little stitch these stitches are in our stitch bot, uh, book refresher stitches I think it's called so over here this side now as long as you want it and down not letting that thread go so I'm going to carry on with this now and I'm going to go around all the patches with the feather stitch now what I might do as well on some of the, pa the patches as I approach them I might actually applique some lace over the top I'm not sure about this yet I might leave it to the end or I might do it as I go just little pieces of lace um, I'm going to see how it goes maybe there's a piece there that piece there is over a nice oh sorry you can't see this piece here has been placed over a nice piece of green so the green poke, uh, po the green pokes through the eyelets there, and I might just carry on this sort of idea. We'll see, see how it goes. It'll take its own shape, its own form. So as I said, I will carry on now, and if I see a piece like that, I might try and pop a piece of lace down on it. If not. I will leave it till the end and then sit back and have a look but until then once again I'm going to carry on every piece now has been sewn down in place and it's been edged with a feather stitch all the way around in pink blue or orange you can oh some red along there as well next thing to do 
is to start the slow stitch um, as I slow stitch I'm going to put down some pieces of lace or some little flowers here and there I'm just going to scatter them and hold them down with the slow stitch so I need to work that out now I'm just going to show you the back of this because I think you'll see the shape of the cat better so here's the cat there and as I explained earlier I was trying just to sew down the the pieces the fabric pieces here that um, go on the the actual shape of the cat I didn't want to waste too much time sewing over the outline there didn't seem any point so if you can see here there's the cat and I have kept that as much as possible along the edges you can see here I haven't sewn those so this is where the cat finishes that side um, it finishes here just around here and around there so I haven't wasted too much too much time and energy and fabric on sewing outside the shape of the cat because that's not going to be needed so I'll put that there so I've now threaded my needle with two strands of silk now I've used this to actually I think this is cotton I'm using here yeah this is cotton and it's quite a thick cotton so I've only used two strands with a nice pointed needle a sharp needle with an eye long enough to take the two strands I, I think I shall start here because it's central and I think you'll be able to see that especially if I make this bigger there we go now I have a collection here of all sorts of bits and pieces and they, these really are scraps they're the scraps of the scraps um, which some people would really throw away because they, they are a bit <laughs> like rubbish to be honest but I've managed to save some look at this so I have three rather nice flowers there and I could keep them like that together or I could cut them up into single little flowers so I'm not sure what to do with that one let's put that there I trimmed this from this piece of scrap here that piece went round there so I, I took that off and I think I'm going to pop that there I'm going to put the edge it seems to fit just nicely in there so I'm going to do that edge to edge um, I'll just check to make sure mind you that's a quite a nice shape no the whole lot goes in there the whole the whole shape because these although they look quite big on the screen when you bear in mind the shape of the cat comes around here so we're not looking at this piece here it's just that and I don't think that will go no that won't go there so I'm going to start here and I'm just going to hold it down the this down with just one pin and just start my slow stitch so I could do the slow stitch follow the slow stitch around the shape or I could go from side to side the long the long way or the short way um, because this is quite in the middle it is going to be eye-catching I think I'm going to do this uh, oh gosh this way lengthwise because if I follow it round the shot the shape which is sort of a semicircle or an arch I'm going to be going across all these all these stitches and they won't be noticeable I might lose them in the thread whereas if I go this way I can at least skip under them I'll do a small stitch over them so I keep the pattern so I will st I'll just move that bit there a bit more edge to edge so I'm going to start there and I'll start in the corner just a nice 
over so stitch just a very small one just to lock it and there we go that's locked so now just the regular running stitch the little slow stitch in and out and in and out you can vary vary the length as much as you want to i won't do a demonstration of this stitch because it's so easy we all know how to do this now there are nice little running stitch all the way along so i will carry on doing this all the way across the cat now i will leave some areas bare just so you can see the fabric i mean this one where are we here it's like a, a very large em embroidery anglais i've put some lace underneath that that blue you can see is a piece of lace i just tucked in through the holes that doesn't need anything at the moment the thing is with this as with all artwork that you do the more you do it highlights areas that you need to do so although at the moment i'm doing this thinking yeah i won't do that i'll leave that plain by the time i finish this and the surrounding areas i might look at that and think oh that does need something so at this stage it is really hard to um hard to plan so i'm going to do that there now i've also got some beads now i will put some beads on here on some of the ends of the feather stitch here give a nice that gives a nice feeling of growth so i'm not sure whether it will be these beads multicolored beads or i might find some glass beads but at the moment i favor these because i can see the colors in here all the colors here especially that one there seems to be a lot of that color in there so this is where we are at the moment so i will carry on with the slow stitch little bits of applique with some of the net here i'll just sit and place it and then slow stitch over it and add the beads so as soon as i've made a headway i'll get back to you and show you the progress okay to get this all in i've put it on its side here it's actually the right way it's facing me but on the screen it's the wrong way so i just very very carefully turn that round although there might be bits of ears and bits of feet missing and i shall move that so this is how far i've got at the moment i started slow stitching i'll just bring that down slightly i started slow stitching some of the pieces in place the applique pieces now you might notice that last time you saw this this was up the other way it was upside down um i looked at it and i thought there's something not quite right there that made me feel good so i turned it up the other way and um, i like it that way and i've slow stitched right the way across it now these pieces here um are applique they haven't been sewn down yet they're just pinned in place as is these anywhere you can see the pins is where they're just being held down this down here as well all held down so that piece has been sewn there's a piece here that has been appliqued um sorry slow stitched um this this really lovely detail here with the sequins has been slow stitch down these are just waiting now for their turn to be slow stitch now what i have done i put the cat the template the white paper one back oh i just make that a bit smaller now i put the white cat back and all the pieces that were hanging right the way over here and here i trimmed off because they were just flapping about getting in the way so these are the pieces that i've trimmed off that piece is lovely i should use that piece for some for some applique and maybe some of this i really need to throw these tiny bits that now why would i want to save that tiny bit i'm sure if you give me two seconds i'll come up with an answer why that is important and oh look a cat's eye why that's important and that's important but there really comes a time when you think oh, i've got to get rid of some of this 
so maybe those tiny pieces I won't keep oh that see look that's that's a bit like a tiny ear there but we'll see we'll see so but what I did as well I play I matched the edge of the shape here with the sewing the edge of the tacking stitches you remember we did the edges here the edge round here so I matched this edge with that edge and I very very carefully went round adding the seam allowance around the shape so in some areas like here that isn't tacking that is a marker pen so I've gone round the outside and that is to remind me about the seam allowance around here and I've done a very fine marker pen now that is as far as I've got I don't think there's anything else I need to add I haven't put the beads down yet I thought I'd leave the beads till the end it's looking very very busy at the moment and I don't mind that look I actually like that look but I don't think I'll add anything else now I'm going to start the stitching and at the end put the beads on so apart from the stitching and the beads um, I don't think I'll be adding any more fabric for a plique not sure but I don't think so at this stage so I should carry on and get back to you when there's a little bit more to see now all the pieces have been sewn down they've all got um, some sort of stitchery on them or most of them have I'm looking at these um, this is the shape of the head and the ears here they haven't got stitchery on them this part here it's all been slow stitched and here um, here so there's an awful lot of slow stitch going on around here now what I've done as you can see on the screen or maybe not I'm just going to make that a bit bigger for you oh that's better isn't it that's a lot better so the head here oh and, and you can actually see here the outline of the head round there and round to the ears but I've added some cross stitches a couple there I'll just move this up and some down here as well now I'm going to sit and look at this for a while and then I think I'll probably add a little bit more stitchery surface stitchery on here I might add some more crosses some more cross stitches um, I should go back to our stitches refresher book and have a look through there but I'll probably stick to the old faithful faithfuls the herringbone and maybe a couple of pinwheels but I think it's basically finished I'm not sure whether to do a bit more slow stitch on a few of these maybe around there or here um, I'm going to have coffee and I'm just going to sit and look at it and see what it needs now okay I hope nobody's shouting out it needs the bin it needs the bin done. So I've added a little bit more detail here you can hear that beads there I've added some more uh, surface stitchery in the form of crosses here I've added blue um, I think there's a oh and some red ones here I'll just make this bigger that's better isn't it I've added a little bit of lace here but it was beaded lace and that's slow stitched down with the yellow stitches there I added some lace here and I've slow stitched across there some red uh, cross stitches here and some red slow stitches around there blue here the cross stitches I put the blue in and some red here between the yellow a few red there but I think the biggest change I, I probably made are the beads if you can here are the beads so we've got a nice texture and the beads have added to that so there's beads here all the way around here and some up there 
and a few down here as well so I don't think there's much more I can add to this I think that is finished now and it's time to look at the face now I want to do the face before I cut this out so I've sorted out some lace and I think I might do the face the cat face in lace so I had this little piece here, it's from the edge of a tablecloth and I've started to cut it. I've cut the edge off here, the lace piece that went across there and this piece here went at the bottom. So it's all from the same piece and I'm going to try making the face from this. I thought I might be able to get the eyes from the rosettes of the lace so I could have two eyes round about here um, maybe another eye I just cut these very very roughly just so you get an impression or we get an impression actually because I don't know what it's going to look like we get a bit of an impression of what the cat's face could look like and remember it doesn't have to be naturalistic it's all what you want I can see at the moment these will possibly be too big and that could be the most scary cat you ever see um, not sure not sure and then there's this piece here I've cut off I mean I'm not sure what I do with this at the moment we could put that somewhere like that so it takes on the look of that cat Oh, I can't remember what that, that cat's called. It's not Garfield, is it? Or oh, it might be Garfield. So we could do something like this. Hmm. Yeah, um... Yeah, actually, I wasn't expecting that to work so well. I think I'm going to play around with these. Quite like... <laughs> I quite like that. Now, this is the template, so let's see how much of that we would actually lose right we'd lose these edges here so that's how big the actual face would be which might make the eyes a bit too big but let's see what would happen if I cut one of these in half I like this I do like that that effect we could have eyes like that what's that like ah oh. yeah i think it's well worth playing about with the lace to see what see what i come up with so once i place the lace and if i like it i might start sewing it down or i might get back to you before i do that um sometimes the time just runs away and i get lost in what i'm doing and forget to get back to you but at the moment that is looking quite promising I like this bit here it's like the cheeks of those big fluffy cats I can't think of what they're called but yeah so I'll, I'm going to carry on with that now and see what I come up with but I think that might actually be it but we will say oh I'm likely to come back with something completely different and here it is totally different First of all, I have cut all the surplus calico off. It was getting in the way and there was quite a little, quite a lot to cut off around the edges. So that's that. Now the pieces that I thought I was going to throw, all these, I didn't. I've actually used them. And I've used them here. I've given the cat some eyebrows. And here. And I've appliqued some, some of that spare fabric that I've just shown you and I've secured it with herringbone here and here the eyes are almond shape, shaped um, sequins and on top here the green I've secured two beads from this now this believe it or not was an earring and I bought this amongst um, a lot of broken jewellery from a charity shop and these are really lovely I thought they were wooden when I bought them but I think now they're just clay but they're really really pretty so I've taken two of the green 
and I've popped the green here, secured that with some gold thread on top. The whiskers from a broken necklace. Now this was two strands. This was the back. I'm going to hold that up. This was the back, the clasp but the back and it's that bit still works. So the clasp was at the back and I just cut these off. Now on the ends of these I did actually use some hot glue to stop the beads rolling off and then I've over sewn between each bead, arranged the whiskers how I wanted them. Now before I did that I put some leaves down. Now we've used these fern like leaves before in different projects and I just thought that close up it actually gives a whisker. Can you see that better? actually gives a nice whisker effect uh, what else have I done the mouth that's appliqued lace on some of the red I think I I had two pieces of these if you remember rightly and I said oh they look like ears well I've used one of those here and I've just uh, popped one of these beads on it to give the illusion of a little tongue sticking out now I think everything else that you've seen, now I made the pattern a little bigger to include the seam allowance and all I did I went right the way around the edge of the original template, right the way around the edge and I added every now and again I just dotted where the half inch was all the way around. Then I joined the dots up and cut through them. So that is nice and symmetrical and I've cut, no I haven't cut around this, I pop that down and now I will cut around this. Um, this here was just to get rid of the surplus but now I shall cut around that, I should pin that on and I should cut that out. I've already cut the back out, now that is the back and that is from my son's one of my son's shirts now after i've cut this out i am then going to match them up and machine sew them now i shall be leaving this much oops i shall be leaving that much which is about four inches open from there to there i will leave that open so i'll be machine sewing from there from here all the way right the way round to there that will be open so I can put some stuff in inside so that is my next task to trim all the way round here to match this shape and then machine sew it and then as soon as I've done that I'll get back to you and you can have a look as this is the exciting part now because we're actually finishing this off a little bit of a mistake here I started stuffing it or Oh, pulling it in that way and I realised the camera wasn't on so I'm not going to pull the ears out again but this is how far that I've got it's been machine sewn all the way around the edge now when you get to the points the pieces here like the the neck here and the feet um, and the ears you need to slip in at these pointed places not enough to break the stitching so stay away from the stitching but it gives a nice little bit of stretch um, and it loosens it up when you turn it in the other way and you you uh, stuff it if you didn't break that at uh, the tight bits it would be too tight in the other way and it would distort the shape it's just like dressmaking and snipping in so <laughs> Once again, I'll continue pulling this in now to the right side. Um, didn't actually get this far. I was I ju just about here and I thought, oh, the camera's not on. So this is quite an exciting moment. Right, I can see the, the face emerging already. Now, as soon as this is out, Oh yeah, oh, a lot of beads falling off. One bead's falling off, and it looks as if it's from there. That's no problem. Right now, need to just. 
Now you might find it easier to do that with a pencil. That bone fold out there is just a bit too thick, so I'm going to do it with pencil very, very carefully. This has got a point on it. That's it. And you can also do this from outside with a pin. I can see the bits here where I went over the beads and the beads have come off. I might have to do a little repair job there. Right, so that is the face. Now this will need a little bit of a repair job there. That's where the machine needle caught it. But that's not bad, just one bead. Now I'm going to use polyester stuffing for the inside. Now I say polyester stuffing, it's actually um, a pillow that I bought really cheaply from a local supermarket. Um, the cheapest that you can get, but they work. it works out a lot cheaper to buy your stuffing for your craft work like that from a very inexpensive polyester filled cushions and pillowcase, uh, pillows. Now if you went to a big retail store um, you'd pay double just because it's craft for craft purposes and it would be exactly the same as I have here. I think this pillow it was a nice big polyester pillow it was about three pounds it might even have been a bit less than that it was very very cheap and I would think on a bed it wouldn't last too long to be honest and um, probably last a month or so well no longer than a month but um, but for this it's lovely and it, of course it's washable so I should carry on doing this Feeling this and making sure that the points, the ears and the feet, the points of both, I'll put that there, the points of the feet and the ears are well are well filled, are well stuffed. Now you put as much stuff in, in your creature as you wish. And we've nearly finished just the base now to sew up and how we do this you see the opening here we're just going to fold in the two pieces and pin them keeping in line with the seam allowance so two sides together and pin we have done this before a couple of times so I won't do an exaggerated demonstration because I think um, you all know how to do this now so just fold them in like that I think I only need two pins I won't even tack it two pins there to keep it down in place now I'm using a strong sewing machine thread in brown which will probably lose itself in all the colors and I'm using it double nice sharp needle and I'm using it two strands I think I said nice knot in the end right so I'm going to make that smaller because I've got the camera literally here it's <laughs> literally in front of me and this is hard to bend go into the end or the start of the gap depending on how you see it so take the needle in to, to the actual gap pull the knot and hide it hide the knot in between the two sides there and then we're going to go over little, little stitches from one side to the end other right to the end you might like to do this with great big cross stitches you might like your stitches to be shown or to be seen I think nice big cross stitches would look good now that's knotted up so it's got caught in the polyester right so carefully remove the pin and over again so I should do this right to the end oh, right yeah. at the end just over sew in the same place three or four times making sure it's 
nice and taut and then take your needle into the main body and pull it out anywhere and then cut just cut that off and there you go nice and neat so we're going to just push him into shape a little bit of shape going on there bring his feet out there and now all that's missing is a ribbon you might recognize these ribbons from the last project the daffodil journal so i'm going to pop those around the neck two i'm using them too if i don't like it i should take one off but oh i've only just cut those really rubbish at tying bows and there we go and there is your little bit of light relief after the the big journal and actually i think that would make i know it's the c word and it's really early but that would make quite a nice Christmas decoration um, maybe smaller so using a smaller circle to start with let's pull them into shape and there we are all done and dusted hope you enjoyed that and um, I look forward to your comments mostly on Facebook now so that, that's quite exciting that um, looks as if it slipped oh I don't know what's happened there that oh i see what's happened the clasp has come undone that clasp with the stuff in the, the clasp has come undone so i'm going to have to pop that in there we go i hear that click in a minute smash him that is better not much better i'll have to spend some time pushing the clasp in the action of the stuffings made the clasp undo but not to worry, that will be fine. So there we are, our slow stitch cat. So as I said, I do hope you enjoyed that. Um, nice little bit of um, nonsense really. After all that thinking with the journal. I did think at one time this would make a pin cushion. <laughs> nice pin cushion. <gasps> but I'm not sure I could bear to stick pins in something that with eyes. So... I'm going to finish there anyway. So I look forward to your comments and um, I'll speak to you soon. Well